So we talked last week uh, about Joe Rogan as our sort of lead topic. The cancellation campaign has really stepped up a notch since then. So not only are, is he being accused of spreading COVID misinformation, now the accusation is that he's a racist. Uh, Tom, you wrote about this this week. Uh, what do you make of it? Yeah, well, I suppose the kind of slightly glib <laughs> summary of it is they couldn't get him on COVID misinformation, so now they're just going to call him a racist <laughs> instead. Um, but they, yeah, this... It's a uh, tried and tested tried tactic. <laughs> like, how long will it be until that one finds itself out? But yes, it's, it's um, this was originally kind of sparked by this sort of montage of clips of him using the N-word um, mm. various times over the course of his you know, 12, 13 years, whatever it is of podcasting. Um, as he pointed out, always quoting the word or referring to other people using it or just talking about the word itself, you know, which again, up until quite recently was something that particularly in America, uh, people would do. Mm. You know, it wasn't that shocking to hear yeah. people quoting the word or whatever, although there would occasionally be controversies about it, of course. Um, and then there was this other clip, which is far more damning, I think, but nevertheless is something that he's fulsomely apologised for, which is about 12 years ago, where he kind of almost basically sort of stumbles into making like a racist joke and then sort of pulls back from it. Um, something which, again, he's kind of very sincerely apologised for. He said it wasn't what he intended, but it sounds really bad and all the rest of it. And so this is just part of the kind of ongoing campaign against him. I mean, I think the response from a lot of people, particularly a lot of his uh, people who know him, did, and even if you just have a sort of casual look at his work, I mean, this doesn't, he's not some sort of racist ideologue or misinformation mm -hmm. merchant. He just isn't. And yet still the fact that this campaign against him just isn't stopping, I think, really demonstrates that this is so much more about the people pushing this. You know, it's the corporate media who have this fury at the idea that people aren't listening to them, basically. You know, trust in mainstream American broadcast media in particular hit, has hit an all-time low in the course of the past year. Um, and they, rather than taking that as a kind of point of reflection and wondering why don't people trust us um, and we could all list a, you know, cases as long as our arm in relation to why that might be the case. No, it's his fault. It's yeah. these it's these people's fault. It's the audience's fault for being so easily led. And so that they just have to bring him down, really. You know, and anything will do mm. is, is what it kind of feels like at this point. But it's it says very little about him, I think, and very much about the prejudices and the um agendas of the people going after him. Ella, I mean, the accusation of racism feels almost like it's it's weaponized more often than it's sincere these days. It's quite shocking, isn't it? Yeah, and I think it, we've said this several times before on this podcast, it degrades the seriousness of racism, which is that if you're calling someone a racist, it's a bit like calling someone a Nazi or calling someone a paedophile. It's a very serious allegation that should be taken very seriously. It's not It's not like calling someone an idiot, or at least it shouldn't be. Mm. But it, it has become cheapened. And part of the problem with that is then if you start to cheapen the kind of boundary for what we consider to be racist, you start to, that you know, it, it leads away to people not treating racism seriously. Um, but I don't really care whether, whether or not... Uh, Joe Rogan is or isn't a racist. I mean, I think it's quite clear that he isn't. Mm -hmm. um, but I, that shouldn't matter. In, in if you look at the larger context of the fact that you mentioned in your article, Tom, you've got Jen, Jen Psaki and you know people high up in the White mm -hmm. House yeah. saying, "Well, he's apologised, but it's not quite good enough." Yeah, or, or the or the warnings were that Spotify put in were a good start. You know, yeah. <laughs> but there's more that can be done. Yeah. Stuff. First Amendment, hello, like yeah. you know what? Hang on a minute. Eve isn't the nature and the understanding of free speech that even if someone was using the N word in a way which was distasteful or racist, that they should be allowed to do that on their own podcast because that's what free speech is all about. Now, I know that we don't have um, absolute free speech in a way that Spike would want it. And I know that there are many caveats to that, but we've just completely lost sight of even that kind of that principle which yeah. is that even if you did take issue with what he said that doesn't necessarily mean you should be allowed to censor him and as tom points out you know some of his episodes have been taken down sort yeah. of on the quiet mm -hmm. whether or not it's him doing it whether or not some spotify it's a doing weird it. selection of them as well like one with louis theroux has been <laughs> i can't imagine there was <laughs> a lot noted. of you know racial animus yeah, in that yeah. but anyway. god and the it feels like a real scream of outrage from the mainstream media in particular look so many journalists now who you know have had podcasts out with the new york times or other things who can't even touch the popularity that he's mm. had and it's just this kind of bitter jealousy yeah. it feels like if you can't beat him then take him down and delegitimize him there is a reason why people are so drawn to joe rogan and that's because to be fair to him he has made a sell for himself out of platforming people that don't get platformed uh, elsewhere. And that is interesting to people because 
uh, you know, big surprise, most of the general public have open minds and yeah. don't like yeah. to read the same stuff in, day in, day out with the same prejudices that a lot of mainstream media seems to have fallen into. You know, if only some of them would <laughs> would figure that out and maybe replicate his model with opening up their own platforms, then they might get a taste of the kind of popularity and celebrity that he's had. But I can just imagine that he's laughing all the way to the bank. I mean, it is interesting though, isn't it? Because I think that point you make about the kind of what he does and um, just these kind of very kind of open-ended conversations with people that you might agree with, disagree mm. with, some are quite extreme, some are not. Um, that kind of unguided sort of conversation on a kind of mass scale is what really terrifies them like if, yeah. if, if they're not particularly if the audience is this large if they're not getting what is effectively the approved message on the issues of the day whether it's covid or anything else it just terrifies them you know it reminds me of um when the new york times wrote that piece about that clubhouse app last year and they, they said this was a place in which unfettered conversations were taking place <laughs> this, is, this is the most terrifying thing that could ever have happened you know there was a there was a, um, a ap story a few years ago talking about how podcasts were a big loophole big scary loophole mm. where um social media kind of regulation happens because it's just there's just not the same level of restrictions and filters put on it and it's just it's so clear that um you know it's like that that, that old line about purit puritanism being the haunting fear that someone somewhere might be happy for the elite today it's that crippling fear that someone somewhere might be thinking for themselves, yeah. not paying attention to what they're saying, uh, actually criticizing them. <laughs> it is uh, this panic about misinformation. That's really what it is at, at, at the root of all of it, which is that you have all of these people, whether it's in politics or the media or anywhere else, who think ordinary people are complete idiots and yet can't understand why those people don't trust them. Yeah, That's what it seems to come down to, I think.